We are looking at vectors in R2 and R3, and in this video we're going to be talking about the cross product. Now the cross product is only defined in R3, so we're going to stick to vectors in R3 for this video. Now the cross product has got a bit of a messy definition, but we're going to work through it. So if I've got two vectors, V and W, it's quite a complicated formula to get to the cross product. We'll get to the formula shortly, but what I want you to notice firstly is that the cross product between two vectors gives me another vector. So this vector is in terms of components, i, j, and k. It can also be written in the other notation, but notice that the cross product results in a vector, whereas the dot product results in a real number. Cross product results in a vector. So what is this complicated calculation? Now, if you are familiar with matrices and determinants of matrices, then this cross product of v and w is the determinant of the matrix A, I, J, K, and then the components of V, V1, V2, V3, and W, W1, W2, W3. So it's the determinant of that matrix. Now, if you've not done linear algebra or worked with matrices, we're just going to force the formula a little bit. So just take a look where it comes from. Once you've done it a couple of times and you'll have to practice this one, it'll make sense. All right, so to find that cross product, I'm going to write it with the other notation, not with the components i, j, and k, just to show you where those things come from. So for the first entry, we ignore this first column, and then we say, well, it's v2 times w3, so I'll multiply that, minus v3 times w2. So v2, w3, so that product minus that product, minus v3, w2. That's the first one. Then I put a minus there. All right. Now, if you worked with determinants, it'll make sense where that comes from. But for now, if you don't understand determinants of matrices, just remember that we put a minus there. But then we keep the pattern the same. So we put the minus there so that we can keep the pattern the same. So let's look at that second entry. So now we ignore the second column and we say V1 times W3 minus V3 W1. So again, we multiply V1 with W3, V1 W3 minus V3 W1. So that's the second entry, but it's got a minus in front. Now the third entry, the pattern remains. We're going to ignore the third column. And we say V1, W2 minus V2, W1. So we've got V1, W2 minus V2, W1. And there we go. I had to squash that in a little bit. But that's how we're going to find the cross product. Now this results in a vector. Now we're going to do it with examples. And then we're going to look at what does the cross product, what does this vector mean, what is the properties, and what is special about it. So just remember, only in R3. All right, so here we've got a couple of vectors, V and W. We're first finding the cross product V and v cross W. Then we're going to find for the same vectors the cross product W and V. So we want to see, is the cross product of vectors, is that a commutative operation? So V cross W, to get that, we're going to just write i, j, k, write the components of v, because that comes first, minus 2, 3, 0, w, 5, 1, minus 1. So for the first entry, we ignore that first column, and it's 3 times minus 1, so minus 3, minus 1 times 0, so minus 3, minus 0, so that's minus 3. Okay. Then I put a minus there for the second one. Then we ignore the second column. And it's minus 2 times minus 1, which is 2 minus 5 times 0. 2 minus 0 is 2. All right, and that minus in front is from the definition. Then the third entry, we're going to ignore the third column. Oops. We lost the one there. All 
Now we ignore the third column, and that entry is minus 2 times 1, so it's minus 2 minus 5 times 3. Minus 2 minus 15 is minus 17. So there's the vector that's the cross product of V and W. And shortly we'll look at what it means, what it stands for, what is special about that vector. But let's just see if W cross V gets me the same thing. So we look at I, J, K. Now W is first, 5, 1, minus 1. V is minus 2, 3, naught. Ignore the first column. And I've got 1 times 0, minus 1 times minus, th minus 3 times minus 1. So it's naught minus minus 3, so it's plus 3. Second one, we put a minus in front. Ignore the middle column. 5 times 0 is 0, minus minus 2 times minus 1 is 2, 0 minus 2 is minus 2. The minus is from the definition, so we've got minus minus 2. Ignore the last column, 15 minus minus 2, that's 15 plus 2 is 17. So let's just make that a bit prettier, 3, 2, 17. All right, so what do we notice about the two? V cross W, W cross V. First thing to notice, they're not equal. So we don't have that commutative property, but we notice that they're very similar. They're basically the same size, but in the opposite direction, and that is important. So V cross W, W cross V are just in opposite directions, but it's the same magnitude. The direction is just totally the opposite. So it's a scalar multiple of minus one. All right, so let's see. The first property of the cross product. It gives a vector that's perpendicular, we sometimes use the word normal, perpendicular to both V and W. So this vector V cross W, I'm saying this is perpendicular to V and W. And we will check that shortly. But also W cross V is perpendicular to V and W. So how do we check if vectors are perpendicular? Well, we take the dot product. So V's dot product with V cross W is minus 2 times minus 3, that's 6. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. 0 times minus 17 is 0. And I get 0. And you can check W as well, it's dot product, with V cross W. And that will give you another 0. We've got minus 15, minus 2, plus 17, and there we get 0. All right, so that's not a proof, that's just one example, but we get a vector that's perpendicular to both V and W. Now the question is, with this cross product, they're two vectors in opposite directions, if I take V cross W and W cross V. So note, and that's where, and it's often used in physics, we have the right-hand rule. So if I've got V cross W, if you take the thing your fingers of your right hand and you curl it in the direction that you're multiplying. So V cross W, then your thumb points in the direction of this perpendicular vector. So out of this page comes the perpendicular vector V cross W. But if I say W cross V with my right hand, curl your fingers in the direction of the multiplication and your thumb Sticks it, stick it out and it goes through the page. So W cross V goes through the page. But both of them are vectors that are normal or perpendicular to V and W. V and w, uh, to v, v and w. Right, if they're not parallel, we'll look at the parallel idea shortly, but if they're not parallel, then the magnitude of V cross W gives me the area of the parallelogram with edges V and W. So if I've got a parallelogram, the area of that parallelogram is the magnitude of V cross W. But now if V cross W is zero, if they're parallel, then if they're parallel, then the cross product is zero and the magnitude of the cross product is obviously then zero. And if you think of it graphically, if V and W are parallel, then there's no parallelogram between them. And that's where you get the case that the cross product is zero. In the next video, we're going to look at some more examples of using the cross product and looking at some more properties of those.